Okay, I've stopped sharing so we can get going. If James, do you want to? Uh, oh, James has disappeared again. He disappeared at the same moment the uh, the message that said the meeting's being recorded started. Oh well, that was that was me. I'm recording the message. But oh, you you I scared James away. Right, yeah. <laughs> I've even got a slide about that, but anyway. Well, um, okay, Vern, in in default, I guess you as the ruling uh, Van Tug executive member. Oh, I get to introduce you. Yeah, introduce. Oh. Good grief. Well, okay then. Uh, welcome. Who's all here? We got about half a dozen people or so. Thanks to the... Uh, Thanks for Rob Slade, who is our, going to be our speaker tonight. Uh, he's got all the uh, all the knowledge about what security is all about, all the inside poop. So uh, we've got Rob on for um, every. We're well, here every two weeks for some time to come. Yeah, until September, I understand. Yeah, so uh, we'll know everything about security, and we're afraid to ask for that point. <laughs> um. I don't. I, I think I'll just let you uh, start the meeting, Rob, and um, I'll put myself on mute. Carry on. Okay. I will try and share my my slides. Uh, where? There we go. Okay. Hopefully, you've got the the slide up. Um, this is me. I guess. Uh, who am I? Um, I, I gave a little bit of an introduction uh, last time out, but um, this time, because we're talking about COVID-19 and that sort of thing, I should let you know that I put myself through university back in my ill-spent youth, uh, working in a hospital and, and various other uh, medical things. I took medical physiology in university and stuff like that. And I tend to be the, the person in the family that when we have to go in and see elderly friends and relatives in the hospital, which tends to be far too often these days, although not for the past year, uh, that I'm the one that uh, when people say, you know, what's wrong with him? You know, Rob, go and find out. So I know hospitals, and so I go and find out. Anyways, when uh, COVID struck, um, I was uh trying to explain various things that that came along uh issues that came up about the virus uh to my colleagues in security and uh using of course uh security concepts and and terms to explain the things because they would understand that so on and so forth and uh so after a while, I figured, OK, let's let's put this together into a uh, presentation that I could, you know, maybe uh, take to conferences and that sort of thing. So I did that uh, and it started to grow and grow at about the same time. I was helping uh, somebody get uh, their book published and their publisher was interested in this as the topic for a book. So I wrote uh, cybersecurity lessons from COVID-19, which uh, should be out in another two weeks. Actually, it comes out the day after the next uh, meeting that we have in, in the Van Tug series. So, um, that'll be interesting, I hope. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to getting my author copies. Anyways, so that's why I know a little bit about uh, medical stuff and, and COVID-19 stuff and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so dealing with security uh, and security management, I've broken this up uh, a little bit. The the full presentation now takes about, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 hours. Uh, so uh, this is this is kind of a reduced version and this is only part of it. And then we have uh, uh, part two and another two weeks, part three after that. 
so this is security management and security architecture lessons from COVID-19. Subtitled, Why I Am Losing All the Respect I Had Built Up Over Four Decades for Juan Palmer. Um, like, uh, uh, well, uh, many days over the past year, I've been watching this afternoon the Dr. Bonnie Show, co-starring Adrian Dix and Nigel Howard. And uh, uh, Vaughn Palmer, um, who I have read and enjoyed for, for many, many years, well, four decades, uh, um, for his insightful political analysis, his, his knowledge of the subject in uh, British Columbia, which is, um, it's, uh, you know, quite impressive, the, the things that he knows in that field. Um, and this year, for some reason, he decided to be a specialist in uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic, and he has just failed miserably. Every time he asks a question on the Dr. Boney show, I cringe. So anyways, um, as I say, this is this is part one of a three part series. Part two is security operations, uh, physical security, telecom. And uh, I should leave that for you uh, for a little bit there. Um, a shortened link, uh, but I've already created the meeting for next time. So um, uh, is.gd is, is my favorite shortener. I tend to think of it mentally as is good. I have no idea what it stands for. But anyways, that's that's what it is. And so capital C, capital Y, capital J, capital S, uh, digit eight and letter X is uh, what you need to get in for next time, for two weeks from now, uh, which will be March the 2nd, I believe, if I'm not completely out of control here. So uh, anyways, hopefully uh, everybody's got that. And uh, for the, the whole thing, well, actually for the whole uh, uh, Vanta security series for the next uh, eight months, um, this is the link uh, that I uh, generally maintain over at the uh, the ISC2 community, which I uh, tend to sort of use as as a kind of a uh, blog uh, for various things, although they use it for other things. Um, anyway, so again, uh, the ISGD shortened version, capital J, capital O, digit five, lowercase n, lowercase w, and uppercase letter z. Uh, and that will uh, get you full details of, of what we're doing here. And you can just take a picture of the screen and burn. Even if you've got an old phone, you can just take a picture of the screen. So uh, anyways, uh, I did pump that into the chat area, by the way. Um, uh, all of these details, all the URLs that, that I've got here. Um, but for those who sort of join as we go along, um, which uh, I don't always uh, know, uh, that um, is, uh, I you know, hopefully I did it uh, fairly late in the game, but uh, um, you, uh, I'll, I'll try and remember to do it again when we take a break and and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, March 11th is when the pandemic was declared. The World Health Organization first used the word pandemic. The infamous basketball game happened that night uh, and, and stopped sports, you know, uh, professional sports as, as we know it. But for me, everything began actually the day before on March the 10th. Uh, that morning, I was having coffee with somebody and was discussing the fact that um, I was going to be attending CanSec West, besides Vancouver, the Vancouver Security SIG, um, and at two of those things, I was going to be speaking. Um, you know, that was that was going to be really, you know, a big deal for, for the next couple of weeks for me in March, and by dinner time, bang, everything was gone. So, you know, life sort of changes in an instant. Um, and everybody uh, knows that, everybody recognizes that. Um, it has been a, a problem and an issue for all of us. Um, 
anyways, as I say, lessons in security. Lesson number one is how much security do you want? And um, obviously from uh, the number of people who decided from Vantug to, to attend this, uh, the answer to that tends to be not much. Uh, so let me ask you, how much vaccine capacity do you want? Everybody wants a vaccine right now. Everybody wants vaccine capacity. Everybody is asking why on earth didn't the government have more vaccine capacity? And you can blame Stephen Harper for that and that sort of thing. But how much vaccine capacity did you want in 2019? You know, a year and a half ago, nobody cared about that. You don't care about security until after you need it. Well, after you need it tends to be too late. So, uh, you know, that's lesson one. You, you need to think about what you want, what you need before you actually need it. Plan ahead. That's, that's uh, one of the big issues. So that's, that's lesson number one. Now, by the way, I said that, you know, life changed for everybody. We are actually in a position of privilege. Um, now this I, this slide is actually uh, rather out of date. I, I made this up uh, almost a year ago, and that uh, you know was pointing out the little blue dot right at the bottom. That's BC, and this was you know every jurisdiction over five million population and how many uh, COVID nineteen cases they had at the time. You know, so we were and really still are in a relatively good situation in British Columbia. We in technology are in a relatively good situation because most, for in the most part, um, we still have our jobs. As a matter of fact, we are um, possibly more in demand than ever before because businesses are starting to think, what can we do with technology because we can't have people in the offices? Can, can we do remote learning? Can we do... Uh, uh, you know, telework and, and all those other things that, that people have been ignoring for years and years, and we are the people who know how to do that. So, uh, you know, we aren't the ones sitting at home twiddling our thumbs and, and not being able to do anything uh, and, you know, having to go out and get CERB and, and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I recognize the fact that we are sort of living in a position of privilege and you know just sort of keep that in mind as as we go now uh i, I mentioned the dr bonnie sh uh, shows co-starring co adrian dix and nigel howard I, I you know highly recommend it this is a master class in effective communication of difficult topics and situations and that's the the YouTube uh, playlist for the um, for the BC government, uh, basically. And the, the Dr. Bonnie show is in there. If you uh, uh, watch Global TV, uh, Global TV uh, carries the the show live. And and these days it's mostly Mondays and Thursdays at three o'clock. Um, although they. <laughs> Uh, they're not real great about announcing in advance when they're going to have things. Um, so, as I say, you know, the, the YouTube channel is, is one way you can do it, but it's really, it really is impressive. And um, we, uh, Dr. Bonnie is a, uh, you know, one of the reasons that we are in such a good uh, situation here in, in BC. I'm a big Dr. Bonnie fan. You will uh, see that again, but communication of, uh, uh, hard, uh, complicated topics, concepts, situations is one of the things that we have to do in security. And so there's a, yet another lesson here is uh, how can you uh, teach people uh, very often who aren't terribly interested in learning about the complicated concepts and and the difficult situations that we need to ensure people uh, are uh, understanding in in any situation particularly uh, one that comes up all of a sudden and nobody understands ah in terms of security we we 
security is not just a single thing. And so we, we break it down a bit in terms of uh, the, the triad of security. We say confidentiality, confidentiality tends to be the thing that people think of first. Um, but there's also integrity and availability, which, all three of which are or can be important. Um, it's sometimes uh, different from company to company, different enterprises have uh, a greater or, or lesser uh, uh, feeling of importance or, or demand for different parts. For example, uh, I was teaching a CISSP seminar in Vancouver for once uh, a number of years ago, and there were two guys sitting in the class right beside each other, uh, one of whom, whom worked for ecom. Those are the people who answer uh, the phone when you call 911 and, and other things. And uh, uh, right beside him was this guy from the Atlantic Business Development Bank. And the guy from ecom, uh, as he said, you know, they, they don't exactly want to broadcast things, but confidentiality was not their main concern. Their main concern was availability. When you call 911, somebody's got to answer the phone. And the guy from the Atlantic Development Bank, he said um, they dealt with, with really complicated information from the companies. Uh, every company uh, that wanted development money from the government was was submitting tons and tons and tons of information about the company, about their market, about their plans, and all of this stuff. If it got to their competition, who may themselves be submitting uh, at the same time for uh, development money, uh, it really, really could threaten the, you know, the existence of the company. And so uh, in those cases, they uh, you know, they really had a need for confidentiality. But in terms of availability, as he himself said, hey, we're the federal government. If we disappeared for a month, who would even notice? So, but in terms of confidentiality here, by the way, you are being recorded. We're recording this and uh, hopefully at some point we'll figure out how we can uh, post it so people will be able to uh, access these uh meetings um on a recorded basis so uh but yes in in terms of con uh confidentiality contact tracing is another thing that really uh will well it 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 fights sort of both sides contact tracing is vitally important in terms of the security of the population. Con detailed contact tracing is how you figure out where the virus came from, where it's going, how many cases are, are happening at any given time. Um, but that involves a lot of personal information. And so contact tracing is uh, really, a, you know, it's, it's a, a security plus and a security minus at the same time and it, it's you know an interesting balance we'll talk more about that in the third lecture in, in this little mini series um when we talk about legal stuff and and privacy issues and that sort of thing so uh, integrity now there's huge amounts of misinformation and even disinformation being bandied about in terms of COVID. Uh, just one example, as I was making up this, this slide, the, the first set of these slides, Canada disappeared from the COVID dashboard. And uh, I mean, you know, that, that was just kind of funny, you know, concerning to us, nobody else cares. But uh, the integrity of information is not aided by the fact that this is a very complex situation. And you have situations like most people, you know, it is a fact that most people will, who get COVID will experience only mild symptoms, if any symptoms at all. Uh, but there's an awful lot of people who, you know, it's the worst illness that, that I've ever had. And that's true too. So both of those things can be true. 
the plural of anecdote is not data. And, and it's going to be a while before we really understand. We do not understand this disease even yet, and particularly with the variants coming along. And we'll uh, be talking about variants um, in a bit. Now, in terms of integrity, uh, this is something from 100 years ago in the Spanish flu. And, and this was a device that somebody tried to sell. And they were saying that it, it produced ozone and you could breathe in the ozone and the ozone would keep you from getting Spanish flu. Well, you know, fortunately it probably didn't work because if you did breathe in a lot of ozone, ozone is in fact poisonous, it's toxic. So, uh, you know, yeah. Lots of these things going on. Now there's there's misinformation and there's disinformation. You know, misinformation comes from ignorance, comes from fear. Um, th then there's, you know, genuine contention of ideas. There, there are gonna be experts who disagree with each other. And even as I say, you know, just said, uh, some people who are saying that, um, you know, most people get no symptoms. Other people who are saying it's it's terrible. I there was some guy uh, who just got out of the hospital seven months in the hospital. Uh, yeah, plus of course you know you can die. And then there's the long haulers. A, a friend of mine, uh, Vern. Um, I can't remember. Do you, did you ever meet Ray Kaplan when we were doing the Decus Symposium stuff? Um, he's had COVID and and he's a long hauler. <coughs> so, you know, there there are, yeah, as in some cases, you know, a, a fate worse than death is is not uh, an exaggeration. Um, and there's there's a lot of people who are out there uh, selling frauds, like that, you know, Spanish flu ozone thing. Um, there's a lot of people who are are you know trying to sell you something or. Uh, promote some idea of their own and you know that's that's actually you know deliberate disinformation in, in a sense and then there are people who are just trying to attack people who are trying to sow discord distrust um, yeah and you know I mean we've we've seen um, over the past several years several attacks in terms of disinformation launch from uh, Russia launched from China, launched from North Korea, um, specifically aimed at getting uh, people in the United States or in other uh, Western countries simply to disagree with each other and to fight with each other. Um, and then there are just, you know, some people who want to watch the world burn and, and that sort of thing. So integrity of information can be very important. Um, oh, and, and uh, there's, you know, people jumping on the bandwagon. Both Stop the Steal and Anti-Fax people were at that January 6th riot, <laughs> along with many, many others. So, you know, there's all kinds of things. And, and availability. <laughs> really, toilet paper? Honest to goodness. I mean, um, it's it's wonderful stuff, but uh, I... I really wonder um, at, at people, uh, you know, what what are their priorities? Anyways, on we go. Um, we are going to talk more about uh, availability in, in part three, which includes business continuity planning. But back to security management. So, um, OK, I, I love this. This was this was my first and biggest reaction when the, the uh, pandemic started was these, you know, people out there with these fogging machines and, and trucks uh, fogging and spraying stuff around and It's sort of like, you know, what on earth is, there is nothing you can spray in an open area that will kill viruses, particularly the COVID virus and, and won't harm you. And, and so this was just security theater, which, you know, um, an interesting uh, term that we have in our industry where people have to be seen to be doing something. So they do something, even if the something they're doing really does nobody any good at all. Uh, now, we'll get into uh, social engineering here, and, and sometimes you do need to actually do security theater so that people will 
see that you're doing something and, and will trust you in that sort of thing. But, you know, don't fool yourself. Um, uh, be be aware of, of what's real and what's working and, and what's not. Um, and the, the reaction that many people are having here, you know, oh, good, the authorities aren't perfect in the middle of this ghastly mess. Let's point that out and harp on it. And I, you know, again, Vaughn Palmer, um, Aaron O'Toole, Aaron the Tool, for crying out loud, um, all kinds of people who are saying, you know, oh, you aren't perfect, um, you know, bang, bang, bang. Well, you know, guys, this is not helpful. Um, that uh, is another form of, of security theater, you know, trying to point out that somebody isn't perfect um, really doesn't help when, when we've got a big mess that actually has to be dealt with properly. So, um, uh, make sure that, uh, plug that in and the computer doesn't die. Anyways, so, um, social engineering, as I say, you know, there are, there are ways you can do it. People run downstairs faster with the announcement of leftover conference food than for a fire drill. And the building manager should note that for safety purposes. And again, in terms of lockdowns and that sort of thing, they shouldn't have called it the lockdown if they have just called it the stay at home challenge and posted it on Facebook, the virus would be gone by now. You know, be, be aware of, of how people think and, and how things work and what they will react to. Um, in terms of social engineering, I love Adrian, I first, person I heard say this, I, I think it's Adrian Dix that, that said it, bend the curve and not the rules. And that really, yes, definitely, you know, people are trying to bend the rules, find loopholes, and you, know, you cannot negotiate with a virus. It's not going to work. The virus is, is just, you know, the virus wants to kill you, or at least it wants to reproduce. And, and in terms of reproducing, it's probably going to kill you. So, you know, you, there are no loopholes. You can't bend the rules. It's going to be da dangerous. And I saw this um, as the, the second wave was starting and we had a second lockdown. And uh, that was because they said, you know, there uh, too much socializing, too many house parties and that sort of thing. And as I was going shopping, I realized a lot of people were at the store, but nobody was buying anything. So people were socializing at the grocery store. Look, you know, Honest to goodness, people, this is trying to save your life. Um, don't think you can find a clever way out of this. No, you know, stay apart. Don't socialize. Don't have parties. It doesn't matter whether you have a party at your home, at a restaurant or in the grocery store. You know, it doesn't work when you have parties. People get sick. It's, you know. Okay, uh, another thing, every COVID fatigue, um, lots of COVID fatigue, and this is, I'm, I uh, signed up right at the beginning for a psychological study run out of UBC, and they, now every month they, they send me this thing, and it's, you know, uh, hundreds of, of questions, it seems, uh, sometimes in terms of, you know, how do you feel about this, that, and the other thing. And, um, and of course, most people are feeling depressed. And, and one of the things that I studied in, in university was learned helplessness and, and depression, which is really interesting. And uh, hmm. I am sorry. Teams. I, I thought I hated Slack until I tried to uh, to do Teams. And, uh, oh, James is, James is here. No, James, I'm sorry, you know, go and do something else. Um, okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, learned helplessness does seem to be um, one of the ways that people can get depression. So it's not surprising that people are depressed in the middle of this thing where uh, 
the the world has changed. Everybody is feeling helpless. Nobody knows what is going on. This is something we don't understand. And one of the only uh, ways that we have found to fight against the, the learned helplessness part of depression is to force success. And, and so in a sense, Dr. Bonnie is doing us all a favor in terms of giving orders that say, no, you can't have parties. No, you can't do these things because those are the things that actually will force us into success in, uh, in fighting the virus. So hopefully it's all good. Uh, masks. Now, I don't want to say that you know, masks are bad. I, I don't want to give that impression and that sort of thing, but uh, there really has, you know, been a lot of uh, statements about masks that don't have much evidence behind it. And it's uh, it's really interesting, but um, we will come back to masks in, in operation. So perhaps I'll just leave that for the moment and, and, uh, and we'll go on to other things. Risk management. Now, uh everybody in business uh should understand risk management when you if you are a manager at any level you manage two things you manage people and you manage risk and and so it's i find it really intriguing that um business people don't uh uh like security because we are the people who who formalize risk management uh, more than anybody else. And, and so in a, in a sense, we're just doing what everybody should be doing anyways. But it's, you know, interesting to look at the risk factors here. Um, age, of course, uh, male, uh, men seem to uh, take this harder than women do. Uh, uh, fat, um, diabetes, high blood pressure. I have all of those things. I'm done for. Any random SARS-CoV-2 virus lands on me, I'm toast, obviously. Um, but risk management, um, it's it's hard to uh, to explain risk to everybody because risk involves every aspect of risk involves uh, probability, and it's you know it's it's not a binary on off thing. Um, risk. Uh, well, there's one guy who famously says that there's no risk of getting a, a computer virus on your computer um, because there's no probability involved. You know, you are going to get a virus on your computer. Uh, so it's, you know, this is uh, the the type of thing that that risk management uh, becomes difficult in, in terms of. But some of the aspects here when you're dealing with risk management you don't get to choose it's it's not one of it's all of you know staying home distancing hand washing masks not going to parties not having parties you you have to do all of that and it's the same with security you don't get one free click on a drive-by download safely if you choose a good password, it doesn't make, you know, work that way. Even if you've got a good password, if you click on a drive by download, you're going to get owned. And, you know, just that's just the way that it is. Oh, we finally got James on here. Good. Uh, good show. OK. Um, vaccines are coming. That doesn't mean you can give up. That doesn't mean you can ease up. Um, everybody watches hockey, right? last minute of hockey last minute of the period or the or the game does everybody just you know lays around no that's when people start fighting and and diving after the puck and and that sort of thing so the vaccines are coming yes but the vaccine administration can be very complicated if we have another surge of cases and so you don't want that you can't get a vaccine if people think that you are contaminated or infected. So, you know, uh, in terms of, of managing the risk, you know, don't give up that now is the time to be even stronger in, in these things. Um, ah, OK, um, do we need a break here? Uh, 
I'm I'm perhaps a little bit ahead of time, but uh, that means we can maybe open it up to a, a little bit of uh, questions here. But as as we are doing uh, that or or thinking about that uh, vaccines. Speaking of vaccines, due to the ultra cold shipping requirements for the vaccines, there is a projected shortage of dry ice. Does anybody else find it ironic? that we may be in trouble because we don't have enough carbon dioxide. I think that's funny. And uh, the other thing is in terms of taking COVID-19 precautions, if if you won't listen to anything else, uh, Vancouver Sun, December 26th, had an article, is COVID-19 linked to erectile dysfunction? So if we can't get you to take that, um, uh, and and uh, pay attention to it. You know, maybe we can get you to take some precautions by by looking at that. So, uh, so if I stop sharing, uh, then um, are there are there any questions at this point? Up up to this point, there there is more material here. This is just a break. That's all. I cannot hear you, James. Your mouth is moving, but there is no sound. Oh, okay, anybody else got any questions? I'm sorry, James. I can see that you're trying to talk, but no, we we haven't there got we any. Is that better? Oh, OK, yes, yes, we, we can hear you. So now, uh, yes, we had quite the evening. Uh, it's good to take a break. Uh, we'll talk to you when when you're back. Uh, we have just added a couple other people. I can't see the room, but I think I have a good idea of why I couldn't see it before. Uh, again, it has to do with uh, yours, mine or my other account on Teams. OK, so we, we are definitely going to have to fix this as as we go along, but uh, yes. Well, somebody suggested, well, why don't we just use Zoom? And I'm like, well, that's good. I'm, but currently, I'm using Zoom, Periscope, um, Teams, and Facebook. And <laughs> I was trying to join us together and join the Teams, um, but now um, it's not. So currently, I'm screen you sharing your Teams. Uh, yes, hello, Maholtra. Martin. Hi. Are you in the Zoom meeting or in the Teams meeting? Teams meeting, nothing happened. I'm back to the Zoom. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, I wound up joining the Teams uh, uh, through another anonymous one and joined it as a guest. And that connected me. And now the Zoom is, or the Teams meeting is being shared across Zoom. OK. I, How many I, people have you got on the Zoom meeting? Uh, well, it's just three of us now. OK. Well, we've got. Uh, we got a half a dozen here in the uh, uh, in the Teams meeting, so uh, welcome to those who are are on the Zoom meeting. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, uh, I'll go in and take a bit of a break, and and you guys can chat amongst yourselves, and and then we'll uh, we'll start up the second half. Beautiful. Okay. okay. So while we're doing that. I will come over here and uh, give a, a change, uh, but we'll be able to see uh, Rob's. So we'll take him off air there for a moment as we get used to the uh, restream live studio. So what we've done is I've taken restream and put it together so that we can share. Oh, I see this over there. So if we want to that. Oh, look at that. There's an echo effect on the video. So. Hello again. Peter, did you make it into the Teams meeting or are you just on Zoom? Just on Zoom. Okay. So I'm sharing it here anyway now. Uh, I, have have a, I have a blank screen on the other.
Yeah, I just, I'm waiting. Let's see. Let people in the meeting know you're waiting. Well, I think I'm doing that. No, I have. Oh, these are coming back here because they, they didn't get anywhere on the other either. So I ended up in the room by myself. No, yes, fine. that's exactly what happened to me. And then what I did is I signed out completely, went to another uh, Chrome profile with another user and signed oh. in from there. And I was able to join the meeting. Just in time for everybody else to take it. Hey. Murphy's Law, right? So yeah. they're all they're all just working their way back in. Uh, I guess Rob needed a break. He did uh, take off at seven o'clock and started on it, even though we weren't there. So I believe uh, I tried to do an upgrade in uh, Teams earlier today, and I have to go and uh, sign in with our organizational administrator. Wait, he won't mind if I do that. I just have to tell him first. And then uh, upgrade us that way. So we're looking good. We have the Zoom controls here, and we have this here. So we'll be able to share the Teams meeting when we get there. So, what do we do now? Um, right now, at the moment, um, Rob is just taking a break. He's been at it for 45 minutes and he just needs to uh, grab a tea and a coffee or something and use the washroom. So he'll be back in a moment. Okay. Um, I just have to make sure. What that's the answer? You know, this is, this is why I joined you guys. It's because I love all fixing all the technical problems we're getting. <laughs> well, maybe we can work on fixing the technical problems in test meetings and and not uh we, we, on the actual <laughs> we had it down and i was just going to take the zoom and overlay the uh meeting but of course um they didn't want me to do that there's always a problem we did have a few uh meetings ahead of time uh on the last event and it seemed to work okay we all got in the same room so okay uh again any any questions um from the the first part and and particularly from the the people uh in on the the zoom side um we didn't catch much of anything we came to you straight as you went to break so uh we missed your first half of the session completely thank you for um, Sharon, uh, did you get the recording started? I I do. At least I I hope I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, I am just uh, pumping in uh, the uh, links and and references uh, for this into the chat. So hopefully you can access that and perhaps uh, punch it over to the people on the Zoom side. I have this now, and I will add it to the Zoom. OK. Well, with that, uh, then I guess maybe we can uh, get started on part two here. Uh, where, where are we? There we go. OK. So, uh, risk management. Again, we've got the, the new uh, strains and, and uh, people are really concerned about that. You know, does it uh, increase the risk because we're talking about them um, being more infectious, um, uh, possibly being um, deadlier, more dangerous, um, and that sort of thing. Now, the new strains are mutations, and the mutations come from copying errors. Um, the fact that this is an RNA virus makes uh, uh, the copying errors more uh, likely um, than when we have uh, DNA. DNA, in a sense, sort of has a, an error correction 
uh, type of situation to it when, when it reproduces. But each new copy of the virus is an opportunity for new variants. Um, now, most of the time, the variants aren't dangerous. Uh, most of them actually just die and, and we never hear about them. We only hear about the ones that are more successful, which means uh, they are more infectious, they, you know, uh, survive, they hide better from the vaccines, whatever it is, you know. But remember that this is, you know, blind random chance that we're talking about here. Um, but each new case means more reproduction means more opportunity to produce a variant. So when you aren't taking COVID-19 precautions, that means that you are in fact, not just contributing to the risk of, uh, getting the virus yourself or getting infected and, and giving it to somebody else, somebody in your family, a friend, an, an elderly relative, whatever it may be, but also the fact that each new case means more possibilities of a new variant. And each new variant means a, another opportunity for the virus to get closer to its ultimate goal, which is to become completely infectious like measles and airborne and aerosolized and uh, infects every time it lands on your skin and doesn't produce any symptoms for an entire month until, you know, everybody is infected and then it kills everybody. So, you know, just remember that there, in terms of risk management, it's not just the obvious stare you in the face risk. There are also attendant risks to all of these uh, areas. So. Um, now again, you know, everybody's freaked out. New strains, ah, went in trouble, warned, doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. But the thing is, in terms of protecting against the variants, we already know what to do. And that is what we are already doing. Stay at home, wash your hands, uh, don't go to parties, wear, you know, all, all the things, you know, stay physically distant from people. All of these things are uh, important, but we already know what to do, how to do them. So, you know, do not panic. You know what to do, just do it. Um, and it's the same with security. You know, you know what to do, make a backup. Don't click on every link you see, that sort of thing. Um, two dose vaccines, I, again, you know, it came up today on the Dr. Bonnie show again. Uh, because of the delays in, in Pfizer and Moderna, um, we're getting delayed uh, shipments of the vaccines. And so people aren't getting their second dose when they thought they were going to, you know, three weeks after the first dose or four weeks after the phone, you know, whatever it is. Um, the thing is that um, while it is important not to give the second dose too early, it's far less important how long you delay the second dose. As a matter of fact, there's uh, already some uh, pretty good evidence that delaying the second dose of a two dose vaccine will in fact uh, end up providing stronger protection and, and longer lasting protection. So, uh, you know, it, again, it, you know, this is, this is not an issue to panic over. Okay. Um, in terms of risk analysis, um, you always do the cost benefit analysis. And uh, everybody's talking about this in, in terms of COVID, in terms of, you know, oh, we can't have lockdown because, you know, that destroys the economy and, and that sort of thing. Now, you know, risk management is always a trade off. Um, and you do have to look at, you know, what is the cost going to be? What is the benefit you are going to achieve by taking this safeguard and that sort of thing? But, you know, life safety is pretty much the number one priority, um, generally speaking. So, uh, you know, bear bear that in mind. Um, 
And uh, it's something we've seen an awful lot of. Um, nobody is perfect. Emergency management is for emergencies. And, and we've seen so many instances of this. Um, disaster recovery, business continuity planning, um, you try to plan for an emergency, for a disaster. But the the point is that in a, an emergency, um, you know, something is already wrong. And if your fix isn't perfect, um, well, you know, too bad, but you're trying your best. Um, and uh, again, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we, uh, uh, in a couple of, well, in about a month's time. Um, when we talk more about business continuity planning, um, but uh, you know, it it kind of irks me um, that people don't recognize that this is this is emergency management. This is you know, if it's not perfect, at least it's saving lives, and and that can be. Oh, and by the way, in terms of emergency management, um, I really really recommend uh, to everybody, and and uh, I guess uh, everybody. Uh, on on this time we had a lot of people from uh, out of canada uh even offshore um last time but uh the knowledge.ca is the knowledge network um in bc and uh it's not available outside of canada but uh, you can stream uh any of their shows from the the knowledge.ca website if you want and and i really recommend search and rescue north shore um, it's it's a beautiful piece of filmmaking. I think it's a five part uh, documentary, um, and uh, you know it, impressive stuff because of course they're they're shooting it in uh, the beautiful uh, wilderness out here. Um, but the the search and rescue people on the North Shore are are pretty impressive, and uh, uh, so you know good good scenery, good filmmaking, uh, good work, and and. Uh, pointing out, don't go into the woods unprepared, really. So, um, another issue, again, partly related to the um, social engineering stuff, how vicious are you going to get with people who break the distancing rules, who keep on uh, having this question on the Dr. Bonnie show that, you know, every, every time, uh, you know, some journalist is going to come up with, you know, how, you know, uh, you know, and we really want you to punish these people who are going to parties or, or uh, you know, not social distancing enough or not wearing masks on transit or, you know, whatever. And what are you going to do to, you know, to really not sock it to these people? The thing is, um, Dr. Henry uh, really takes a, a good line. You know, she doesn't ever get caught in this track. You know, no, you don't want to really push the fact that um, the people who are break the rules are going to be punished. And again, in, in terms of management and, and management of security, you want to take this um, position. She she says, you know, people are trying, people are doing their best, but, you know, the majority of people are trying to do the right thing. And I mean, you know, like the, the saying says, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So, uh, you know, this this is an important thing and, and you have to uh, understand how people work. Um, in that regard, um, one of the things that we do in security is security awareness, security training, security education, whatever. And security awareness is, is very much unregarded and, and I, as a teacher, I think security awareness is, is very important. And I get a lot of pushback from my colleagues who say it doesn't work. Well, you know, it doesn't work perfectly, but it does work. And uh, the, the pandemic has given me the proof of that. Dr. Bonnie takes this position, education rather than mandates. And BC, again, as I pointed out at the beginning, is doing rather well. You, when you compare us to Alberta, to Ontario, to Quebec, certainly to the United States, BC is doing very, very well. And that is down Dr. Bonnie Henry. So, um, metrics. Uh, you cannot 
manage what you cannot measure as as the the mantra goes and i'm i'm not entirely sure that that really uh works in in all cases but um we've seen tons and tons of metrics and and in the dr bonnie show uh every day they, they talk about case counts case rates doubling rates death rates cases per capita hospitalization i see all all kinds of things and uh now it's it's interesting to look at one of the the numbers um that certainly keith baldry tends to to really push is the positivity rate uh and it's really interesting there's there's a, a an excellent book in uh metrics called uh, pragmatic security metrics um and uh pragmatic is an acronym and i can't remember all of the things but uh the R is relevant, the M is meaningful, the A is accurate. And the positivity rate, um, there can be some really interesting uh, numbers that you play with here. The BC film industry is, uh, well, it's going great guns because, I mean, they can't do any filming in California right now. They're, they're having a terrible time. But um, you know, we're, we're shooting all kinds of movies up here. And part of the reason is we've got all kinds of, of regulations up here about how they handle it, you know, who can be near what. And of course, the testing, they do a ton of testing. Now, the thing is that while that testing is, is not being, you know, it's not taking up lab capacity. I'm not worried about that, but it is uh, reportable. And so the testing that they do, um, there's so many more tests that they do on their uh, working teams that happens in the regular population that they are actually skewing the positivity rate. The positivity rate in BC is possibly half of what it should be in, in terms of the total rate that you look at because the film industry testing is included in there. And, and so sometimes the number, you know, the metrics that you get do have factors in there that don't give you the full story. So uh, again, another lesson in, in security, you know, make sure you know uh, the numbers and, and what they are in fact uh, telling you. However, it can tell you some interesting things. Um, in uh, BC, well, in, in comparison, uh, you know, a co per capita comparison to Canada, um, BC should have 3,000 dead. In comparison to the US, BC should have 6,000 dead. And BC has just over a thousand dead. Now I made this slide a couple of weeks ago, but you know, really the, the numbers still hold there. And and so Dr. Bonnie has saved 5,000 lives. You know, that's a that's a fact. That's a that's a number. That is not um, something that uh, you know people can dismiss. There you you cannot play games uh, with the numbers. Um, more. Uh, BC has really plateaued at 500 cases per day since November. Now, we, we had a bit of a spike. We went up to 800 for a few days there in, in December. Um, and, and right now, as a matter of fact, um, I think, uh, well, over the last four days, anyways, our, our uh, average is, is slightly before 400. So, you know, that's good. That's good. But, you know, basically it's, it's stayed um, at around this 500 cases per day. Now, that's not great. That's not great. You know, that does mean that we are in significant danger, but the fact that it is a, a plateau, that it's not going up is is good. But the thing is, the deaths per day in November were around 20 per day. And the deaths per day now is about five per day. And so Bonnie Henry's decision to vaccinate the elderly first is saving 15 lives every single day. So again, you know, metrics can sometimes tell you things. Uh, again, <clears throat> bend the curve, not the rules. When when 
people talk first started talking about bending the curve. Uh, some people said, well, it's, you know, that's a false uh, thing because actually you just you, you know, stretch it out, you make it longer. Um, the same number of people are going to get sick. And to a certain extent, that is true, but that gives us an example of time based security. Um, now, uh, Winch Wartow, a really interesting guy. Um, he's he's into the security awareness in a, in a big way. Um, we have an interesting relationship. Uh, he'll send me his book, um, his latest book. He writes a lot of books. And um, I, I will review it and send him the draft review. And uh, he goes to ballistic and says, ah, you said that about my, you know, all those terrible things about my beautiful book, which mostly it's not terrible things that I said. When am I wrong? And he'll say, well, no. So, um, but he he goes for the spectacular. He. Uh, you know, he goes for scaring people. He's, you know, you know, wants to be in your face about things. I tend to be more educational. And, and so we have a, a fundamental difference in, in terms of our, you know, direct approach to what we're presenting and how. But um, we, you know, we don't disagree fundamentally. And, and um, he, uh, you know, I, I understand why he does what he does. Um, but he wrote he wrote one book that I really have absolutely no problem with, and that is uh, time based security. And in in that he says, you know, you're you're not going to win every battle. You you are never going to get 100 percent protection. You are never going to be able to guarantee that somebody can't break into your system. What you want to do is delay them enough so that you can catch them and, and that you know, is is basically the idea behind time based security. The same thing is true with regard to the pandemic. Banning the curve doesn't mean we're not going to get, you know, as many cases, but we're not going to get them all at once in a spike that overwhelms the medical system. So, you know, that it has uh, important aspects there. Now, um, in terms of security, we have we have functional requirements and we have assurance requirements. Now, most people, when they think about security, if they think about security at all, they think about the functional requirements. Having antivirus scanners, having firewalls in place, you know, whatever, you know, having having passwords. Um, that's those are functional requirements. Um, the assurance requirements are when you have a safeguard, how do you know it's working? How do you know it's doing what it's supposed to do? How do you know that it's doing what you want it to do, that it is in fact protecting you? And uh, so I, um, you know, it's it's hard to explain that sometimes. Um, well, I guess. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, um, you want to know that the people who are making your sandwich in, in the you know subway, <coughs> um, that they are not coughing on, well, that their their hands are transferring germs onto your food. So, uh, you know, you go to the, the restroom in any of these restaurants and it says, you know, all staff need to wash their hands before they go back to work. Um, well, that's fine. That's that's a functional requirement that keeps their hands clean and, and yes. But it doesn't have an assurance requirement. You know, all you see is the, the sign. You don't know if the if the staff pay any attention to it. So if you go into a subway. Um, they have gloves, disposable gloves. They use, they always put on these gloves and then they make your sandwich. So, you know, the the functional requirement is the same, you know, uh, keeping your hands clean, not getting germs on the food. But the assurance requirement is is visible in terms of the gloves. You can't tell by just by looking at it whether somebody's actually washed their hands. So the same thing is happening here in the pandemic in the schools. And, and again, one of the things that people are saying, oh, why don't we, you know, make all the kids wear masks in school. 
Well, that's a, you know, that's a functional requirement. Um, you know, we have uh, isolation desks. We can't do that for everybody. And there's masks and physical distancing. They're all problems in the schools. Um, although, you know, hand washing is probably OK. I mean, you can teach little kids to wash their hands and, and make a game out of it and they'll just they'll do it They're, You know, it's it's really wonderful. But the assurance requirement here is detailed contact tracing. And what has been found again, you know, this is fact. There isn't very much transmission in the schools, even when it's going on in the wider community. As a matter of fact, the transmission that does happen, the infection does tend to show up in the schools, tends to come from outside the schools and the kids get infected outside. They don't tend to transmit it to their classmates. And so the assurance requirement here is is saying to us, well, you know, masks are, are fine. There's no problems with masks, but. Having the. Uh, having kids wear masks is, is a bit of a problem and really it isn't necessary because the detailed contact tracing shows us that they, you know, there isn't much transmission going on in the schools. It's which is really kind of bizarre and I, I understand the, the teachers uh, freaking out about this because I mean I was a teacher and we all look at the kids and and figure their little germ factories. You know, every every September, you know, they bring every disease known to man into the schools and and that sort of thing. But in terms of COVID, COVID doesn't seem to transmit very easily in, in the schools, at least not in the younger grades. Um, bars and restaurants. Um, people, uh, w when they were told to stop serving alco alcohol after 10 p.m., no alcohol after 10 p.m., and people were saying, you know, ah, what does that matter? You know, people get just as drunk earlier as they do later and that sort of thing. But the thing is that when they put that mandate in place, the infections dropped. So, you know, again, we got we got metrics to show uh, that uh, this stuff is is in fact working. <clears throat> Defense in depth and, and uh, sometimes known as layered defense is um, an interesting concept in security. Um, again, uh, looking at the the fact that nothing is 100%. You, know, you cannot get guaranteed security. Well, the same thing is happening here in the pandemic. Staying home isn't perfect. It has problems. I mean, you got to go out to get food. You, you're going to get, you know, risk getting infected there. Distancing isn't perfect you know uh there's there's all the people who are saying you know that, that uh, uh droplets can travel farther than than two meters and and particularly if if people are singing you got choirs and that sort of thing um hand washing isn't perfect masks aren't perfect vaccines aren't perfect you know yeah you know, sorry you know none of these the thing is you know when you back up staying home you know, if you can't stay home, then keep your distance. Uh, definitely wash your hands, wear masks. That's it. The, we have a layering of the defense and we have defense in depth. So, you know, again, as I say, you know, it's not pick one, it's do all of them. And, you know, that's, it's a security concept. Um, oh, however, you know, never say in in terms of this. Well, you know, it's it's pretty bad. It can't get any worse. So <laughs> just talk to Nova Scotia. I mean, you know, uh, they had the the pandemic not as hard as we did, um, and uh, then they had uh, they had forest fires down there. Uh, they they had other things, and then they had the worst shooting in Canadian history. So uh, you know, I mean, you know, don't don't attempt worse. Um, now, in, in terms of security architecture, um, it's, it's wonderful what simple ideas can do. And, and this, um, I haven't seen uh, this, although I did uh, uh, see somebody wearing one uh, recently and that sort of thing. But um, this guy who, who actually was, um, they, they made equipment for uh, the restaurant industry. 
And this guy realized that um, everybody that he knew in the restaurant industry wore ball caps. And, and at the time, face shields were really hard to come by. But he could make these things that would clip onto a ball cap and, and essentially turn it into a face shield. And I, you know, I thought it was really, you know, uh, effective, workable, that sort of thing. Maybe it's a silly idea. I mean, it looks silly and that sort of thing. It seems like a stupid idea. I mean, why, why do that? You know, but I mean, it works. If it works, it's not a stupid idea. And even if it's simple, um, hey, use it if it works. And as I say, I am a big fan of Dr. Bonnie, so I will end with uh, her mantra. Be calm. Um, now, <laughs> go to Roger Kipling's uh, if, you know, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Uh, you know, that that has been illustrated so many times in so many ways during the pandemic, and it's really the case in security in in general. You know, you've you've got to keep your cool uh, when you are dealing with security when you are dealing with with all of these uh, very dangerous issues so keep keep calm um, don't blow your stack um, I know COVID fatigue is is uh, you know very prevalent and I know that in in my case you know it, it definitely um, impacts my tolerance for other people's stupidity um, but, you know, you just have to, you know, take a deep breath and, and, you know, remember, um, it's not going to help to, to yell at anybody or freak out and, and that sort of thing. You have to, you have to fix the problem if you can. And if you can't, you just have to accept it. Be kind. Um, in, in security, um, we, uh, we need to take this one to heart uh, an awful lot. Um, we tend to be uh, regarded as the knights who say no. Um, we are the the people who say you can't do that. You you know uh, uh, we're the you know the the work prevention department or or what you know productivity prevention department, whatever. Um, that's that's really not the case. Um, Security is there to support the business. I mean, there really is no other purpose for it. And so you have to, well, you are in, in doing security, you are being kind to your colleagues and, and fellow workers. Um, you are helping them and you may have to explain why it is that what you're doing is helping them, but it's, um, you know, that is the case and that is the attitude to to take to it. Um, and uh, interesting book, The Kindness of Strangers is, is uh, uh, useful in, in many regards in management. And be safe. And, you know, to all of you, I, I say in, in this very dangerous time, be safe uh, and hope that uh, everyone is. And uh, then we, uh, that's that's where we we are. So, any questions? First of all, can you hear me? I can hear you. Good Isn't morning. that amazing? Um, I'm just looking through the other ones, other seminars, and seeing if there's anything there. So we will see. And. Uh, We've got a, we've got a layer so that we can do this uh, through Teams and chat and restream. Uh, I'd like to do another practice um, uh, offline meeting. But <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of COVID. Yes. <laughs> have you been tested? Yes, I have. <laughs> I didn't. And I don't know if I have it now, though. <laughs> Which is another thing. Yeah, we'll come to to that and uh, some of the other uh, stuff about test uh, in the operations. So I guess that's the next, uh, you know, in two weeks. Yeah, we'll talk more about testing. Excellent. Um, any other questions out there? 
just a comment. I mean, it's all security and pandemic. It's all about minimizing risk. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, the threat is always going to be there. It's just a question of, of minimizing. Yeah, or a new one, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, like I say, risk risk management is is uh, you know the way you handle this and and find out what the risks are and and what safeguards do you take a, a, against it. I mean, we could safeguard all of our equipment, take it off of, take all the land links off of it, and, and uh, take all the users and clients off of it, and it'll be totally secure, but it's not usable. Well, uh, very interesting. Um, one of the uh, the things that I. Uh, talked about uh, last time in security frameworks is is the uh, evaluation of equipment and uh, they actually um, uh, oh is anybody from Microsoft on uh, okay we'll risk we'll yeah. risk it yeah. anyways Windows Windows NT I mean originally you were the NT users group uh, Windows NT got um, a C2 rating in uh, uh, the old TC set classification but it was Windows NT server, and it was only given that classification, which is, by the way, the lowest, well, second lowest rating they have, uh, the lowest being has no security at all. But the C2 rating was only given to them as long as you didn't connect it to a network. <laughs> I didn't hear that right, did I? <laughs> that's an actual fact. It's a, That's a fact. I believe it. <laughs> yes, somebody's laughing there too. Yes. So, uh, great question, Colin. Thank you. Um, Moholter, do you have any questions or Peter? No, I think it was great so far. <laughs> nice. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So, I think uh, rather than uh, drag this out, uh, we will let Rob have the end of the day. You were at the CISS today as well? The CRISP uh, seminar Rob? Sorry, which? You were at the, the uh, security seminars today as well, or is that just last week or two weeks ago? Um, okay, I'm not I'm not sure which uh, ones, but no, I... Uh, the CISS training you were doing. Oh, CISSP training, that's, that's actually um, May, um, uh, beginning of May. Uh, that uh, New York Institute of Technology, um, I'm, I'm going to be doing a, a CISSP seminar for them, and um, they are uh, open to having people, uh, other people other than their own students join. So um, if you are interested in that, talk to New York Institute of Technology. Um, yeah. Oh, I like the idea of doing this rebroadcast too. We can just listen in and Sure. Yep. Everybody. Yep. Uh, and in terms of other uh, opportunities, um, actually, that's the that's the first week of, in May. The second week in May, we're having the the B sides uh, conference, which is a security yeah. conference here in in Vancouver. Uh, I know it's going to be virtual. I don't know what um, uh, the the cost is is going to be, but it, uh, B sides tend to tends to be. Uh, a very low cost conference uh, and particularly with it being uh, virtual. Um, so uh, I've submitted a bunch of proposals to them um, and it's going to be it's going to be week long uh, this time. Uh, so quite quite a lot of material. Yeah, the people will be able to pick and choose what they want to watch at that rate. Absolutely. Hard to yep. in for the entire week. Yep. Uh, if you have anything to say about it, have encourage them to uh, record it and share. Uh, by the way, were you able to record the first half of the session? Well, I I don't know. Uh, I it's still showing as as recording. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, um, I you know when when we'll see when when we finish up this meeting, uh, you can check and see whether it shows up on the teams. Yeah, well, um, I don't know. You may have to because I think one of the problems is we have teams, so instead of connecting, we're misconnecting. Okay, well, we'll have to figure this out at some point. 
Yeah, if if all else fails, we can come to Zoom. Yep. Yeah. So I, I can I can do Zoom too. So. Yeah, well, I've got half the meeting recorded in Zoom already. So the later half, when we were able to join before the break. Okay. Timing. We just get into the room, and we're gonna go for a break. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's law. Yeah. So that's good. Okay. Well. Um, Thank you much again, Rob. It's a pleasure to uh, hear what you have to say. Um, all very valid. Um, I wish I heard the first part. Perhaps I'll get to watch the video. Um, yeah. Would yeah. you put those links on the Vantech, please, uh, James? Uh, yes, I will. I actually am trying right at this very moment to connect, but uh, Vantech page wound up with this video unavailable link. So oh. I'll have to well, I'll have to look at that again. But okay. uh, the, uh, what we can call this is the QA technical difficulties channel. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I noticed is last week I got the invitation to my my work email and this week I got it in my home email. Ah. So last week I so you might want to look at your distribution list. Yes, I know exactly what happened. We had about thirty people unsubscribed from our mail list, which I used last time, and this time I wound up putting it in uh, LinkedIn and Meetup uh, because I didn't get to those thirty people unsubscribed. So now I have to go into them and pull them out of my email and get them unsubscribed. So uh, good thing to know and. Uh, the two ways of that happening were the meetup and the uh, internal mailing list. So, a good observation. Yeah, I guess I got this one through meetup, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's the observation. I joined directly uh, from an invite from Rob. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, in, in terms of, I, I, there's, there's the different Slack. Uh, workspaces, there's the Teams workspaces and that sort of thing. But in, in terms of um, my own announcements, um, there is my uh, 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 Twitter feed, which which again, I uh, that should have been part of um, the uh, the chat channel. Maybe I'll uh, that in and I'll share the Zoom. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the way I see it, we'll have this up and running and fully operational by June 30th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So I've, I've put that into the chat channel, but um, this URL and particularly this, this shortened URL that's, that's up on the screen right now, um, that's um, where I and, and posting all the details, uh, including uh, the links as I get them up. And, and uh, as I said, um, the one, uh, where are we here? Um, for two weeks from now on March the 2nd, uh, this is, is the link for that next meeting. Um, but again, it's, it's in my, uh, it's in my Twitter. Um, it's uh, no. It's in um, this posting here uh, on on the ISC two community. Um, so trying to you know get as much information for anybody who wants to join, and and anybody who knows anybody who wasn't able to join uh, this time around, um, you know given this information and all the stuff that's that's in the chat channel right now um for the coming week are you still uh, have an open time somewhere between uh 10 30 and noon each day uh generally pretty much every day yeah okay so we'll try and set up a um testing session for us and we can try and work out some of these bugs yep okay excellent um <laughs> Without further ado, I want to say thank you again. Uh, unless thank you very much, guys. Yes. Yeah, right. thank you. Appreciate it. Perfect. Yeah, great. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You. Um, have a great night, and uh, we will put this to bed. Okay, thank you. Yes, good night. Thank you. <laughs> thank you again, Rob. Okay.
Thank you. See you Thank in you. a couple of weeks. Cheers. Bye -bye. Good night, people. Welcome to Seven Cups. Seven Cups is a place where all are welcome, and we're especially glad that you've joined us. Some people are concerned that their problems are too small, too big, or they just feel silly talking about them. No problems are too Just you and me, James. Oh, very still there. Yes. Sorry, I had. <laughs> I dashed off for a moment. It came back. Oh, the meeting's over. Okay. Okay. Now I'm curious. Where are you? Because I was just trying to close things down. <laughs> uh, uh, how did it look to you? Other than our chaos, you didn't see our chaos, so that's good. The, the meeting looked fine. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Um, Half a dozen of us joined the other one. Yep. And, uh, yeah, quite interesting. So and currently, just looking, where are we connected? Going through. I don't even know if I'm still broadcasting. Oh yeah, I'm still broadcasting. <laughs> there we go. Five seen. Excellent. Uh, thank you for anybody who is still uh, connected on our live stream. Uh, join us again in two weeks. Be well. So, are you still there, Vern? I am. Excellent. Our stream is at it's dead. So, oh, okay. So the stream yeah. part's done. Just you and yeah. I know. Okay. It looks like you and I, but I'm like, where? Because I'm like, eeny, meeny, miny, I can see you. I can hear you. See me, you can hear me. Not live here. Not live there. There you stop. Live stream is down. It's got to be in the meeting room. No. There we go. I heard. <laughs> I can see you now. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, so it seems the problem was that I have two, three now MS Teams accounts, and I'm unable to sign out of them to sign into another one because it assigns you the one that it thinks you need. And then when you log in, I kept logging into my VanTug one, and we're trying to go off of Rob's user, yeah. right? So, yeah. So I figured, okay, well, this will be easy. I just sign into Microsoft Teams like I am now, and then uh, I can share. Oh, oh, we're, oh, we're both seeing on air, but uh, I'm not broadcasting right now. I see that the restream shows that I'm on air, but uh, I'm not. So. <laughs> and then I heard you in the background, and I'm like, I thought everybody left. Uh, toggle all off. Pretty well. <laughs> okay, excellent. Alex from Restream was in her channel, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, I, I picked up a Restream license last year in hopes of uh, LinkedIn and Vantug and everybody. And then the big reason I picked it up for was LinkedIn. And of course, I paid for a year. And then LinkedIn kicked me off their live channel because I got sick with COVID and wasn't broadcasting. So that sucked. So I've got one less channel to distribute on. And I think once I get a few 
uh, post of this, I'll be able to go back to LinkedIn Live and say, hey, we're going again. Let's do this. But with the restream, I can uh, broadcast multiple stations. Uh, for instance, the Periscope channel that we used before, and I was trying to uh, broadcast onto the Facebook page. So we'll see how well those worked. Um, are are you retired yet? Or are you still go into your day job? I'm still doing my day job. It's not too bad a commute right now, so I'm going to hang on to it for a bit. You have to walk into your desk. Well, I have to have to walk about about uh, 20 feet from uh, well, 15 feet or so from the coffee machine in the ki my kitchen to my uh, setup here in the uh, spare room. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, that is a pretty sweet way to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I still have uh, the same office, but I apparently don't have anybody in it right now. Oh. I was told that may change. We may have more more people coming. Hard to say. But see it when you believe it. Believe it when you see it. Yep. Excellent. Um, are you available from 1030 to noon at all? Somewhere in there, if we have a meeting Do during the day, time. not really. No. Yeah. Um, okay. If it's a short meeting, yeah, but not not for an hour and a half. No, no, it would just be uh, system tests. Say hello, discuss. Oh, what we're doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like a, like a fifth. I could take fifteen minutes or so, or whatever, half an hour if we need to do something like that. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, we'll we'll put that on. It's all it's always easier when you have more than one or two people and you can get different inputs. Yeah. Uh, I may wind up uh, upgrading my James at MR Tips account to a Microsoft Business Basic so I can get Teams. Um, and I think that might be our solution here um, for a big part of it. But you know, we're all piecemealing it together because. Yeah. Uh, uh, Microsoft actually gave us the um, full accounts that we can get into, and that's one of the accounts that I have. Me and Mohinder have that set up, and we're the only ones in that Van Tug group. Okay. And then I have the Van Tug team, the Vancouver Technology User Group team that I set up, and then um, I have another. My James at Van Tug created another Teams account, um, so I personally have three Teams accounts, and then. Um, Rob came along and we had to make him organizer because he couldn't manage the team's accounts that I sent to share. <laughs> I'm pulling my hair up the whole time. It's like, ah! Yeah. Alas, what do we do? What you do, what, yeah, you know, it seems that we have to, we have to adapt to the software. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember a time when people figured that the software would um, adapt to us. Well, right. it helps if we program it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. And, and we're given another 10 years, and AI, AI will allow it to adapt to us. Uh, probably going to be. I, I, Faster. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. There'll be some sort of adaptation. Yeah. Whether, whether it's what we actually want it to do or what it thinks we want it to do are two different things. Yeah, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, that's for sure. Excellent. Okay, well, um, I'm going to say thank you. I will um, set up a meeting late week with Rob, yourself, maybe Mohinder and I, and okay. test our systems. I do like this way where I bring up the teams in mine and then share my desktop. That seemed to work really good to bring the two together. Um, but I should be able to get Zoom into Restream as well. Uh, so as I practice more, I'll go there. Okay. And, uh, you know. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, well, why do I do that? Do I get clients? I'm like, no, we get to test some of the great technology in the world. Make fools of ourselves. Who could not want that? Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, I'm going to run away. I've had a long uh, Take care, Vern. Good to uh, see you. You too. Yep. Um, we'll talk this week or next week, and then the next event is in two weeks. Okay. We We've got a two-week interval with Rob. And if we want to throw something else, a random coffee room conversation, uh, we can do that too, or lunch yeah. or something. So try and engage people again. Yeah. Okay. Be well. 
You too. Cheerio. Cheerio.